You may think your hotel is already green, but are you green enough for today's eco-conscious traveler? Welcome to the Sustainable Hospitality Podcast, your destination to learn from hospitality professionals on the value and opportunities sustainability will bring to your organization. It will put more heads in beds and lower costs at the same time. We are your hosts and sustainable hospitality experts, Kathy McGuire and Amy Walls. Welcome back to the Sustainable Hospitality Podcast. I'm your host, Amy Wald, and tonight we are so thrilled to have Sue Graves with Experience Alive with us. She's going to give us some of her tips and tricks on how to implement technology into your hotel in order to achieve those sustainability goals. So thanks for joining us, and thank you, Sue, so much for being here. How are you today? And I'm doing great, and thank you so much for having me on your show. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Um, Sue, so why don't you share with the audience just a little bit about your background and all the hospitality work you have done? Well, thanks, Amy. I appreciate it, and uh, it has been a journey in hospitality for sure. Um, I've always been service-oriented, and that has led me through five different brands with Marriott over the course of 29 oh, wow. years. Um, probably the biggest job I had was managing 41 hotels in four states, and that was a lot of fun. Um, I worked with both franchise and managed properties, so I had an opportunity to gain the perspective of many franchise owners yeah. and the culture that they prepared for their companies and how they transcended that to the people that worked for them and built their own culture. So it was a really, really fun journey. Um, I was sought after by the convention center industry uh, after leaving Marriott uh, to help build a blueprint for that industry for service, hospitality, and operations for improvements for that industry. Um, and that was the Greater Columbia, Columbus. Yes, the Greater um, Columbus Convention Center. Okay, yes. yep, just um, for our audience, point yes, of reference. Uh, was brought in during um, helping to navigate the $140 million renovation and transformation of the center. Oh, um, wow, how cool. Yeah, so it was a really great time to make a lot of positive changes there, sustainable changes as well. Okay. And, um, and then left there after five years being, uh, we were named number one convention center in North America. And wow. I started receiving a lot of phone calls from my... Uh, sisters and brothers in the industry saying I can't check the guest in and clean the rooms and do the budget and a lot of them decided to retire early during the pandemic. It was very, very tough times and so I thought to myself, how can I be of service? And I said, well, if I can help the, the convention center industry and if I've led teams to achieve higher levels of guest satisfaction, what if I could help? source, vet, and connect innovative technology solutions that were also sustainable um, to help improve and modernize a great industry where I grew up and was able to successfully manage raising a family and whatnot. It's a great industry. So Wow, that's really great insight. You know, um, A, wanting to give back to the industry that you obviously are very passionate about, devoted a lot of time to, uh, but you know, to really be able to see um, from your lens what those constraints are, what a, a hotel manager really needs in their day-to-day -day so that they're more successful, so that they're hitting their targets. Um, that, that's a really, really innovative way to approach the market, and I think it's so incredibly valuable. Yeah, thanks. It's uh, the people that I'm connecting with are are pretty grateful. Um, I love it more than anything when I share a solution and they're like, "That that exists." And I'm like, "Yeah, I found <laughs> it," <laughs> and they're so happy because a lot of repetitive tasks that um, you know it's a pretty legacy industry, so you know sure. it's built on the fact of people serving people, um, and uh, you know there's there's a labor scarcity right now, and that is not helping. Uh, get the job done and have happier guests and happier associates because people are overworked and when they're overworked and tired They're not giving the best guest service either. So yeah. There are solutions and a lot of solution providers that have come to the rescue if you will for the industry and Really have created great solutions to fix problems that have a very high need <laughs> for the industry to solve um, one of the things they lack as founders is they're very agile, but they lack the connection to the industry. So they've, they're building, 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 but 
don't have connections. So sure. I come in and I, I help founders succeed and then I connect and help the industry succeed. And in my model, everybody wins. I, I win because I'm making the connection and then they both win because the hospitality industry prospers and the founder has a connection to the industry. So it's, Absolutely, that is a win-win. Um, so, you know, you talked a lot about, or, you know, so far you have talked about a few of the constraints. But what on a daily basis um, did you see were really the constraints that you felt as a general manager in a hotel? Well, I think, you know, labor was a problem pre-pandemic. Yeah. Um, It just wasn't highlighted to the extent uh, until, you know, post-pandemic, if you will. Uh, During the pandemic, many people don't know, but the industry literally lost about 85% of its personnel. Um, oh, wow. Because the industry was virtually shut down overnight. And in order to stay afloat, many, many hoteliers had to make tough decisions. Uh, some hotels closed, some are not even reopened yet. Um, uh, some just scraped by with a general manager and an engineer and one housekeeper. Um, it was Ugh. it was really, really tough. So they that staff dispersed and a lot of them went to work for you know, logistics companies, yeah. Amazon was the beneficiary of many hospitality <laughs> associates. And um, some of them decided to do business on their own, retire early, um, just find new inroads to, to pay their bills. And so as the industry came back, many of those associates um, were a little shy, if you will, about coming back to an industry where they just were cut out overnight. So. Uh, it's been tough, it's understandable, for that, right? tough for that industry to get back on its feet. So, sure. um, you know, we've literally probably lost a generation of uh, the next generation of hotel managers and leaders. Um, because if you imagine those front desk managers or front desk supervisors that would have been AGMs or general managers, and then they, they, they're they gone. Different industry. You're starting over. So um, it's unfortunate. Um, but as I indicated Already, there there are solutions out there to help modernize the industry. And one thing that we do have is new young people coming into the industry, they don't know how to run a hotel necessarily because that just takes time and practice, mm-hmm. like anything new. But what they do know is technology. So if I can help infuse the industry with technology solutions, then that will also attract a new generation of technology literate, if you will, mm-hmm. individuals that are going to help change the industry for the better and take away repetitive tasks that people probably don't want to do anyway and um, watch automation take place that's just fantastic and allows the current associates to operate in a fashion that gives them the, for a higher and better need that improves guest satisfaction. And, and I think that's a great point because I know for myself, the reason I fell in love with hospitality was the connection, yeah. um, you know, and just the way the energy, the way you made people feel and vice versa. And I think um, that is what needs to be kind of rebirthed again in order to reinvigorate maybe people that are kind of feeling a little lackluster about the industry and those new up and comers that we so desperately need, right? Yeah. Is they need to feel the magic of hospitality and understand why it's such an incredible industry to be in. Um, and that's how you really keep loyalty, right? That's yeah. how you keep you know employees engaged um, and loyal guests coming back. So talk to me, you know, I've always been a big believer in, I think innovation and sustainability go hand in hand. So talk to me about um, some of the solutions that you've seen that really check both of those boxes and a a hotelier or a general manager can be confident that, you know, implementing something like that is not just going to check a box it's going to fulfill a need and um, it's really going to allow them, like you're saying, to go on and do those other tasks, do those other things that they like to do and that give them um, guest satisfaction. Yeah. And um, to add to that and thank you, but to add to that, you know, oftentimes there's this kind of 
perception that instituting sustainable solutions will cost more money. Um, and that actually, I have found that not necessarily to be true um, because automation can actually help mitigate damage and uh, bring transparency and insights where they've never had before. Uh, one of those point. solutions that I'm thinking of in particular is how important water is. Um, when Not here in Ohio, where it feels like all it does is rain, right? right. It's rain, right? But, but the importance no. of water and protecting that asset yeah. that is so valuable Absolutely. to our, our planet, yeah. frankly. Yeah. And, um, and a bottom line. Yep, as and you're a bottom saying. Line. So, you know, there is a, there's a great solution that kind of works like an Alexa for water. Um, it fits on, a, on the main water line. Okay. Um, you can affix it to a main water line in about 15 minutes or less. And it will identify when water drips, just like when you tell Alexa to play your favorite song on the radio, it identifies your voice and plays that song. Well, water in a pipe makes a dripping noise, and that dripping noise actually identifies the pretty precise distance from the main water line, which means you can detect oh, wow. water leaks by just the drip of the water. And oh, that's fascinating. So you can detect water leaks and therefore mitigate damage yeah. also because in its current state, um, you know, if there's a water leak, uh, you're waiting till a ceiling falls in and then you have to figure out what floor it came from, et cetera, et cetera. With this solution, you're mitigating damage. Um, so you don't have as many rooms out of order, which saves costs. Um, you probably get a break on insurance. I don't know that for a fact, <laughs> but if you're mitigating damage and you have less loss, that would help reduce the cost and expense of insurance claims. Absolutely. Um, and you're you're saving water at the same time. Which so. is reducing utility bills. Reducing utility bills. Right. So, exactly. Yeah, th there's a lot of gains. Wow, that is a really cool technology. And I didn't know that about um, almost having its own, you know, voice, if you will. It's like a the vibration. Water. Okay. Pipe. When the water makes a drip, it makes a noise, and that identify that noise will identify the pretty close to precise location. And it really seems like an easy solution to a really big problem. Well, it is, and one of the things I look for is affordable solutions that are also easy to implement. Yeah, because I that's know really important. The staff, from the general manager on down, is already overtasked right now. So if I can help eliminate some of those tasks and add value for the asset. Um, I work with a lot of asset managers that are constantly looking for ways to improve the value of the asset. Sure. And so for those reasons, it's a very sustainable solution and reduces expenses. Yeah. And uh, you mentioned asset. And, you know, I think uh, something that keeps coming up recently is the risk of stranded assets. You know, not maintaining your property um, and not making those um, sustainable retrofits and those things that you need to do to make sure that that property is is gaining in value and not depreciating in value um, so rapidly that it can yeah. if you aren't doing those things. So that's that seems like a really no no brainer solution to a problem that I would bet a lot. So every of property properties have yeah just no way to have that kind of traffic and maintenance. Um, ongoing without something, something so simple yet so dan you know can be so damaging. Okay, well that is such a cool solution. And by the way, we are going to put um, all of Sue's information, and maybe we'll even link some of these um, solutions in the show notes. So keep that in mind. But what's what's another solution that you've seen have a really big impact? Yeah, well, um, when I talk about these two solutions in particular, and I'm going to kind of combine them because they both involve um, autonomous technology. Okay. Um, which we so, know you're a fan of. Which I'm a fan <laughs> of, yeah, because um, a couple things. First of all, F&B inventory is, um, can be stressful. It's very time-consuming. And I, I talked to a regional director recently, and I said, let me just put it into context for you. And his name was Ben. I said, Ben, do you really want your $150,000 a year chef counting cans of tomatoes every month? And he's <laughs> like, wow, you put it in that perspective, Sue. Like, no. And I said, so imagine, now you have to do work on this, but imagine preloading. So in the back end, you're preloading all the recipes. So if you have a recipe for barbecue chicken and that calls for barbecue sauce and pepper, let's just say, um, 
every time that barbecue chicken is run into the PMS system, uh, or POS system, sure. it, it would decrease the ingredients based upon the menu. And so that autonomous reduction is transparent. So now the chef can see, hey, we're getting a low Love on it. barbecue sauce. So instead of running to your local Kroger, Winn-Dixie, whatever, a Piggly Wiggly or wherever you live, instead of running to the local grocery store and paying a significant amount of money plus time away, plus risk of a car accident, uh, you're taking away all those risks and high expense by having transparency yeah. with all of your ingredients. And then you also know how much is being sold, what hour it's being sold. Uh, you can actually really dive into the details oh, and yeah. take care of things. Now, what does that do for the chef? The chef isn't alone counting the cans of tomatoes, so sure. you're really wasting a lot more money. But now you're reallocating that chef for a higher purpose. Get that chef in front of guests. Um, asking them how their meal was. Put that chef on the line training their cooks how to prepare the food to for a more consistent uh, for more consistency purposes, um, et cetera, et cetera. And just frankly have fun with your team. But while you're absent in the basement counting cans of tomatoes, <laughs> you know, your staff is running wild and they might have questions and need you, and the guests aren't getting your attention. So Again, that one in particular. The other one I love is autonomous linen inventory. Ooh, so I want this at my house. This is really <laughs> great. Um, this solution in particular can save 10% to 20% on your linen inventory budget annually. Not only that, oh, wow. again, you're taking your executive housekeeper typically and a couple housekeepers, maybe laundry attendant, and counting physically going floor to floor and counting all the linen on a monthly basis. So now... That, that's manually done, right? It's manually typically. done, typically, right now, and then they're recording it on a spreadsheet. Well, that's probably pretty inaccurate because nobody counts the linen in the chute, um, and probably you're not counting the linen that's already in the washer. So you may or may not be counting the ones in the dryer, but you're probably counting the ones that are on the shelf. So first of all, you have a very inaccurate and non-transparent count. linen count on a monthly basis, again, running to the store to go buy linen that is not brand standard. Oh, no. uh, and in this particular case, every single piece of linen is outfitted with an RFID tag. So imagine all of your linen having its own specific social security number, its own ah, social security number. So okay. you know how many bath towels you have, how many, it can even go in robes, it can go, can't go in slippers, but robes, anything that has a hem. Um, okay. an RFID tag. So by the natural movement of linen throughout your hotel, mm -hmm. it's autonomously counted um, with Wi-Fi. Um, yeah. And so now the general manager in this particular case would have a inventory count on a daily basis sent to them. So you would know whether there's theft. You would also have transparency and predictive ordering and predictive budgeting which they don't have any of that right now. You don't own oh, much linen you have. Oh, that is invaluable. So from a budgeting purpose, um, you know what's going on. From an asset manager or regional director standpoint, if you can look at your hotels as a group and see who's losing the most linen yeah. on a daily basis and maybe institute some changes that will help mitigate that loss. So those two in particular are fantastic solutions also reallocating valuable resources, the most valuable resource we have, which is our people. Um, for Absolutely. A, a better and higher purpose. And it's efficiency, right? So, yeah, you know, to me, efficient. a lot of times you can replace the word sustainability and efficiency. And I think that is such a great point because that's where you see those bottom line yep. increases. Um, and, you know, at the end of the day, that's what your boss wants to see. Yep. They, they want to see that they're either saving money or they're making money somewhere. Uh, so those are really cool solutions. Thank you for sharing those. Yeah. Well, I am sure. certain that you probably have a lot more of those up your sleeve, but you know, you have a business to run, right? And these are solutions that you should be able to offer to your customer. Um, you're based out of Columbus, Ohio, correct? I am. But you're... You're but just I a work, plane right away. I work away. worldwide. You I work, work worldwide. Okay. Um, helping customers. I just talked with a customer about an EV charging solution okay. for their property. 
Um, that's a growing uh, a growing need right yes, now. Yes, absolutely. Um, in California, so I work coast to ho- coast to coast and around the world if need be. So okay. most of my solution providers, probably ninety percent of them, um, their solution is operable worldwide. Okay. So yeah. okay, and I think someone just told me that you just wrote a book. I did. So tell us all about that and where our audience can find that. Well, um, it's called the Quick and Easy NFT Launch Book. um, And it's a step-by-step procedure uh, to how to to launch an NFT. First of all, what is an NFT? So it's an educational book to help bring... um, bring people into the Web3 space. Okay. Um, NFT is a non-fungible token. Okay. Um, and there are many, many opportunities and use cases for the hospitality industry um, for this. And so I'm excited to further that book for the next one to talk specifically about the use cases for NFTs in the hospitality industry. So will this be a series of books that you'll do? Wasn't intended originally, okay. but in my head, I think there's more to come. Oh, well, that's but good. You can find it on Amazon. It's in paperback uh, and on Kindle. So Okay, so just give us a little preview of what a use case for an NFT for a hotel organization. What does that look like? Well, imagine if... Okay, so bottom line, resellable rooms. Okay. So imagine if each one of your rooms were an NFT. Somebody paid a higher price for a resellable room, okay. which was the NFT okay. that they bought. So just an NFT is essentially a digital asset. Okay. Okay, it's not anything complicated. It's pretty simple. It's a digital asset. Um, Sports has been reselling tickets gotcha. on Ticketmaster for many, many years. Gotcha. So if you have an emergency and you need to resell your ticket, okay. you can do that right So now. I buy I, I buy a room for a night that's non-refundable, and all of a sudden I have to go out of town for work or I have an emergency, and I don't want to lose my four or $500 that I spent. So you put it on a marketplace. Okay. Just... Imagine Ticketmaster yeah. being a marketplace for sports. There's marketplaces that are available currently for hospitality. Okay. You would put your room on the marketplace and recoup some of your money. Not only that, here's how the hotel wins. The hotel already has your money. It's non-refundable. But instead of the room going empty, if it's resold, yeah. now it, they're occupying. In-room so dining. Exactly. All the ancillary uh, revenue comes with that. Yeah. So imagine from a hotel's perspective, this is hard to imagine now, but imagine running 120% occupancy. Wow. That's what could happen. And so uh, entering, utilizing technology to, again, modernize the industry, this is the industry that needs to be modernized the most. Yeah. Like I said, Ticketmaster has been doing this for Uh, For a long time, um, allowing resellable tickets. But uh, if you think about hospitality and the segments it covers, it's not just hotels. So hotels, restaurants, recreation, and travel and tourism make up hospitality. So um, Baltic Airlines actually just created an NFT series for their airlines, and they offer special perks with it. And so guests can purchase an NFT for Baltic Airlines, um, and they can resell that on a marketplace, and they make it really fun. So I think this is a really fun time and a really exciting time that we're entering into with the hospitality industry yeah, and the modernization of what travel and tourism looks like for the future. The future, yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you. I learned something, and I always love that. That's you know, one of the most fun things about being a podcast host is you get to learn from all your guests. Yeah. All of the all of the things they have to share. So, well, we are so thankful that you joined us here today. And we hope everybody will go out, buy your book. Thank and you. And check Sue Graves out at experiencealive.com. And you can find us here at the Sustainable Hospitality Podcast every week. And we hope that we gave you some tips and some tricks to confidently empower yourself and your team to implement sustainable solutions into your hotel. We'll see you next time. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. Bye, Sue. Thank you for joining us today on the Sustainable Hospitality Podcast. Make sure to like and subscribe. And if you'd like a free consultation on becoming a much greener hotel, please visit us at sustainablehospitalitypodcast.com.